In this presentation, we're going to set a scenario and add an objective. And with that objective in mind, we're going to first fleet map in analog the operations and program it to the radio. And after that, add additional features. After doing that, then we're going to take the same scenario and apply it and fleet map it for digital operation and program and then after doing that we'll program the radio and after having it programmed we'll go ahead and go over additional systems like scan, privacy, emergency, arts 2 and lastly documentation. So first off we've got uh, our scenario which is uh, a school using one repeater and 11 radios and with that we have an objective to have each group in that uh, school communicate with the identification of the individuals and be broken up into three different groups. The groups would be administration, teachers, maintenance, and you'll have three administrators, five teachers, and three maintenance. Right, now we'll go ahead and fleet map this first off we'll fleet map this the users we have them listed first by group and then by the individuals of that group so our first group is admin and we have admin 1 admin 2 admin 3 and so on for teachers and maintenance and we have the transit receive frequency of our repeater so you can see this by each of our groups and we're going to subdivide each of our groups using sub audio for this exercise we're going to use CTCSS and we're now going to use MDC 1200 to assign individual IDs to each of the users and MDC 1200 secondary for your groups Now we're going to go ahead and talk about programming the radio. The first step, would, we're going to introduce the software of the EVX radios and then go into loading names, narrow band, sub audios, and frequencies. After that, we'll register the RF list in the group list. And lastly, we'll set up MDC 1200. So here we go. This is what our EVX software looks like. For those of you who are familiar with uh, Vertex Standard software, it looks much like the VX450 software. At the bottom you have a help screen that changes by whatever field is activated. Now we're going to go ahead and set up our programming for each of our channels uh, in the RF list. First, we're going to activate our RF list by using spacebar, enter, or double click with our mouse on the number. That will change that list black instead of gray. That means that list is active and can be programmed. Next, you're going to select A for analog, for analog operations. And for now that it's uh, 2013 North America, we're going to set our uh, narrow band and after that we'll type in our tags which is basically the channels names and then you have your RF frequencies notice that they're all the same for all three channels and then we'll program in the sub audibles this should all be pretty much review for the majority of you On this next step, we're going to go ahead and register our RF list in our group list. Okay. As you can see here, our RF group lists is assigned to each channel on the channel selector knob. Channel 1 is selected and is utilizing list 1 over here in the RF list. 
channel 2 is using list 2, channel 3 is using list 3. If you do not assign these uh, RF lists to the channels, you will not, when you go to write it into the radio, you will only have one channel. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and set up MDC 1200. First we're going to set uh, MDC Common, then MDC 1200 ANI, then the call list, and then lastly we'll go in and show how to set MDC unit signaling system. Keep in mind that you cannot use ANI and signaling system because signaling system has its own ANI embedded in it. All right. So we're going to first go in and set up our MDC common. This will be done by clicking on signaling MDC 1200 MDC 1200 common as you see highlighted and that will bring up this window here. In this window we're going to set our primary ID as 221 which would be one of our teachers and then we're going to set up our group ID of 102 which is our group ID of our teachers. Then you click OK, and you're now going to want to set up your MDC 1200 ANI. So you see that is located on this button here. When you click on it, this window will pop up, and you're going to want to first select MDC for your ANI type, and then you're going to want to select which MDC 1200 ANI call you want to send out as your uh, ANI ID. Okay, which we will now show how to set up your call. And your MDC 1200 call list is located under signaling MDC 1200, then MDC 1200 call. Once you've clicked on that, it will bring up your MDC call list. And as you can see, you can enter in all the appropriate IDs of your system. And make sure that the system one is checked. Also may type in the tags as well. And this is what uh, the ANI is referencing to this list here. Alright, after this you will click OK. And we'll go ahead and look at uh, say MDC 1200 signaling systems. That's located here. You have a click on here. And you have a pull down. You want to select MDC system, and then you're going to want to pick which system that you want. Once you've done this, you will then lose the ANI checkbox. Okay. All right. Well, so far we've gone ahead and achieved the following communications. We have channel one as admin. Channel 2 is teachers, channel 3 is maintenance, and each operator can utilize that channel to communicate amongst everybody within their group. Alright, now we're going to look at the same system. Now we're going to do it in digital. As you can see, we've got the users and transit and receive frequencies are all the same. Now you're going to notice we have color code, which is uh, 1 through 15. Uh, there is no actual color. Well, I, for this exercise, I selected 10 for the color code. And you'll notice that uh, each of the groups use the same color code. The color code only identifies which repeater. So in a way, it does take the place of the subaudible, but not by itself. In addition, you'll also use your group IDs to divide up your channels. All right. Next is your private IDs. As you can see, each individual has been assigned an ID. And now you have a group ID. All right. Now you'll notice with my numbering system, I use 1001. 1002 and 1003. So 1000 is identifying that, my, that is my user groups. 2000 is identifying my private or individual IDs. Okay, 
Now, in, additionally, in the private ID, you'll notice 100 matches the one in the group ID. So you have 2101, 2102, 2103. Those are all part of the 1001 group. And you'll notice the 2200 IDs match that of the 1002 ID of the teacher group to show that that's all the five teachers of the group. This allows you for expandability to your system without having to rewrite an entire program file for the radio. And we have, in addition, we have an all call. As you can see, the all call is the exact same ID for everything. This is a DMR standard, 16,777,215 is the ID for an all call. Then lastly, for privacy, I selected 115 for our privacy. Uh, we have the option of setting it between 1 and 256. And we're just based, doing basic uh, privacy. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and talk about uh, programming the radio. First we're going to have to load the contacts, then the receive group list, the digital common. After that we'll program the RF list and then register the RF list to the group list. As you can see there's more steps involved but you have more benefits from operating in digital. You have better audio quality, uh, true privacy for one-to-one -one calls, and when you're operating through a repeater, you can have two conversations instead of one at the same time and you're in analog mode. So in analog mode, you have just one group talking at a time, in digital, you can actually have literally two different groups programmed up to uh, talk at the same time. And we'll see in this exercise. All right, we're going to start off with uh, loading contacts. Start off by clicking on digital, and then contact list slash receive group list. That will bring this window here up. But for right now, we're not interested in the entire contact and receive group list. We're only concerned about the contact list. So we're going to just look at this part. Okay. First thing we're going to want to do is set up our transmit ID type. And by doing that, you have a pull down, which gives you these selections, either group, private, or an all call. You can set that appropriately for each one of your contacts. As you can see, we've got to start off with, and we're going to select group. Next, we're going to go ahead and program each of our IDs. And as you can see, our group ID is 1001, then 2101 is our individual, 2102, 2103 and so on for uh, our additional groups of teachers and maintenance and the individuals underneath each. Lastly, you'll see that there's all calls set up for 16,777,215 for an ID. And it's grayed out. It, the system automatically selects that. Okay, keep in mind admin 1 for this exercise is our principal. In addition, we're going to set up a private call so the teachers can contact the principal in case something comes up. All right. All right, now we're going to go to the other side, which is the receive group list. Okay. Now first off, we're going to want to select our receive group list for this exercise. We're going to start with receive group list 1 and we're going to want to select our contact list. And we'll do that by click space or enter and it'll bring up this contact list 
Now notice that the contact list is not a complete list. It only shows the groups within the contact list because this is a received group list. You cannot receive just an individual contact. Okay, so for this received group list one, we're going to select group number one. Once you've done that, it'll automatically populate your tag to be admin. Okay, and that would be for receive group list one. In addition, we're going to set up a receive group list two, three, and four. Two and three are for our other groups, and four is for our all calls. You'll notice that we put each group that we're going to be um, talking to, we can also hear on this channel. Okay. Now that that's set up, we're going to want to go ahead and set up our digital common. That will be done by first clicking on digital, then digital common, and we'll bring this window up. We're going to start off and enter our radio ID. Which once again, it's 2201, our first teacher. And we're going to make sure that private call is checked so we can do communications with the principal. All right, after that's selected, we'll go ahead and click OK. And now we're going to go ahead and program the RF list. Once again, like we discussed earlier, to activate each row, we're going to have to double-click space or you hit Enter to change that line black instead of gray, and that way the RF list becomes active. After doing that, we want to select digital, so we have D in that column. And of course, since we're in digital mode, we're going to be in narrow band, so we have N for this column. And then we'll put our tags for each of our channels, and you'll notice we have admin, teachers, maintenance. We have two all call channels and a principal. Now, because of our repeater in place, we can have two simultaneous conversations at the same time. However, an all call cannot go over both time slots. So there has to be an all call for each time slot. That's why we have an all call one and an all call two. And lastly is our principal, which is our individual call for our teachers to contact the principal if anything comes up. Now we're we have our frequencies, same as before. And then we enter our color code, which we discussed, which just basically identifies that our repeater is color code 10. Next, we're going to set our time slots. Now, you'll notice that both teachers and all call 2 are set to time slot 2. With that, my thought was, since there's five teachers, three admin, and three maintenance, <coughs> since there's so many teachers, they're going to probably want to have their own time slot because there's probably going to be more activity on that group with that many more users. Okay, And then, like I said, because the all-call does not work on both time slots, there's an all-call on time slot 1, and there's an all-call on time slot 2. Now, lastly, our principal channel, you'll notice that it, it is on time slot 1. That's because the principal is in the admin group, which is in time slot 1. Here we're going to set the receive group list for each of our RF lists. You'll notice that Receive group list one, two, and three are for each of our groups, our admin, teachers, maintenance. And then four is used for each of our all calls because the group list can be duplicated even though they're on different time slots. And lastly, you'll notice that the principal is using receive group list one because the principal is part of the admin group. All right. And then we have privacy confirmation. We have this checks because we want to make sure that 
any private calls we receive are confirmed and acknowledged private calls. And here we have the contact list. As you can see, it's, we have contact lists. When you double click on it, it brings up the entire contact list. And we select the group for each of our RF lists. So we have group one for list number one. We have contact number five, which is our second group for our teachers. And 11 is our maintenance group for our third list. And then we went through and used 15 for both 4 and 5 for our all call. And then lastly, since the last channel is just a private call, we selected 2, which is admin 1. And what this basically does is sets a default for our PTT. So when you go to that, so when you go to assign this to a specific switch on your radio, when you press the PTT, that's who you're going to get. For display models, we have menu functions and you can change who you're going to key up. But for a non display model, when you press that PTT button, you don't have a list to select who you're going to talk to. So you have to have that set up. Alright, since we now have the RF group list programmed up, we're going to go ahead and register the RF group list to the channel lists. Alright, and like before, we have channel 1 through 6, and we're going to register it by adding the list number in the list column. You should see that list 1 matches list 1 over in the RF list section. So. Channel 1 is RF list 1, channel 2 is RF list 2, and so on. Once you've selected them, the tags auto populate. Alright. With this exercise, you're able to program your radios for three channels of group calls one being admin 1, two being teachers, three being your maintenance. Then you have two announcement channels, one of all call one and one of all call two. And after that you had a sixth channel which would be a private call from any one of your teachers uh, to the admin uh, principal which is admin one. Now that we've gotten that done, we're going to go ahead and uh, talk about uh, additional systems we have. The additional system features we have is Scan, Privacy, Emergency, and Arts 2. And we're going to go over programming each of them. We'll start off with setting up Scan. We'll do that by first going to Channels and select Scan Settings. That'll cause this window to pop up. And for this window, you have several settings, revert, and such. But our main concern is a Priority 2 scan be checked. So we could use this Priority 2 option in the radio. Now what we're going to want to do is set a button press so we can turn on and off scan. Do that by clicking on common, then key function. With key function, you have this familiar screen which has a pull down of all four of our scan features. These scan features are the same that we've had for quite some time. Scan, group scan, dual watch, and follow me scan. And you select which one is appropriate for your radio to your button. After doing that, we're going to go ahead and set up the individual scan features within the radio. First by selecting the proper group, then checking whether we want group scan or not. Here we check by each channel that we want to be able to scan. 
in this group scan and then you can set a priority 2 to this group scan. In addition you can select a standard group or a group scan or you can also set up an auto scan this way when you turn on the radio it's automatically in scan as long as you want as soon as you go to that channel so channel one would automatically have scan enabled without using a button press now we're going to go ahead and set up privacy privacy is done by clicking on digital then digital common and this familiar digital common screen will pop up again and we'll select basic for your privacy type and for this exercise we set our basic key to 115 in 2.0 release we will have enhanced version of privacy next we're going to click on common and key function this will allow us to set up a button press to turn on and off privacy and you can do that by selecting privacy from your pull downs for one of your buttons now that we've gone ahead and set up the buttons and set up the codes now we need to assign which channels we want to have privacy and as you can see in our RF list PVC Y is our privacy and that when you space double click or press enter it brings up this window and from there you can select whether you want it off key on which means by pressing a button on the radio to turn on and off or have encryption turn on upon power up of the radio which is power on or the last option is number three which is on which basically as soon as you come to that channel it is strapped for secure you cannot disable it now we're going to go over emergency setup first off you're going to go click on common then emergency and then this window here will pop up and you're going to want to go over these four features here. These four features here are for analog and digital operations. After setting them appropriately, you will then select the digital tab and this window will pop up and you can go through and set these four features are your basic features for uh, digital emergency. First one you can enable or disable emergency after that you can select which group and which channel you want the emergency to go out on and then lastly you have what type of emergency mode you want whether it's an alarm or a call or whatever now that you've set that up by clicking OK go ahead and set up a button for emergency this is done by clicking on common and then selecting key function after doing that this window here will pop up once again completely familiar and you select from one of the pull downs from one of the buttons emergency alright now that we've got that set up go over arts 2 okay arts 2 arts is basically an auto range transpond system so you can tell when the radio is out of range you your system. And we can do this by setting up the following steps going through setting up MBC Common, uh, MBC 1200 Call List, so then after that you'd set up the Miscellaneous R2, and then you'd set up uh, Arts 2 in the actual uh, RF list for the channel. And since we've already gone through and programmed MDC common and call us. There's no point in going back over that again. It's fairly simple. So we're going to go ahead and skip right to step three and we'll set the miscellaneous for arts two. You can do that by clicking on common, then selecting miscellaneous. And this window here will pop up. Once this window pops up, you're going to want to select miscellaneous two tab 
and it'll switch over to this view. And your main concern are these first three options here. Your arts mode where you can set it for transit, receive, or transit and receive. Arts beep, you can turn that on or off whether you want an audible beep. And then the last time is last item is uh, arts transmit time whether it's 25 seconds or 55 seconds for the pulling. Okay. You also have uh, squelch tail eliminator as such in this screen as well. Now we're going to want to go ahead and enable arts2 in the channel. First keep in mind that the channel should be analog since we're using uh, MDC operation, you cannot have MDC on a digital channel. However, in 2.0 release, we will have Arts 2 available in digital operation. And then under Arts, you can see that we've selected MDC. When you select MDC from this list, once you've spaced, double clicked, or press Enter, this window will pop up. You select MBC 1200, and once you've done that, this old familiar ANI screen pops up. And you'll then select what call you're going to be using from your call list that you've set up previously for your uh, ANI that's going to go out with your arts too. All right. Now that we've set up all those additional systems, lastly I'd like to go over uh, any additional documentation we have available here at Vertex Standard. All of it can be located on uh, VSOL, businessonline.vertexstandard.com, and it's located under the Resource Center, Technical Information, and the EVX series radios. Uh, we have manuals, programming softwares, technical bulletins, and quick reference guides to cover um, each of the features we covered in this presentation and a few additional ones. I think there's a total of eight of them total.